Hello friend, welcome back to Netcode Hub Channel. I'm Frederick and I'm happy to have you here. In this video, we are going to look at how to implement policy-based authorization in .NET 8 Blazor with interactive WebAssembly. Let's follow this diagram in implementing this policy-based um, authorization. Assuming you have a small company whereby you have the administrator for this administrator, he can view our pages. So pages that manager can view, administrator can view these pages. Pages that user can also view, administrator can also view these pages. Manager has list page. So manager can see list page. Manager can see detailed page. Manager can update page. Manager can also delete. So this delete is not about deleting the page, but rather having a delete page that he can delete any item from the list. He can see the details of any item. Let's say it's an employee. He can see the list of employee. He can see the details of what each employee. He can update an employee in this page and he can delete an employee in this page. So manager can perform these crowd operations. The same thing applies to admin. Admin can also perform the same crowd operations. Now let's go to user. User can see only detail page. And this detail page is his data. So when the user logs in, go to a detail page, we can get the ID and I'll loop through or search through the list page, list of employee, and I'll fish out only his data. So a user cannot see the list of employees. He can see his data here. He can then update the data. He can view an extra pages, contact page and about as page. Contact page and about us page are not seen by a manager. Manager cannot see or cannot have access to these pages. But admin has access to these extra pages. Already, admin has access to detail and an update from the manager session. So we need to add contact page and now about us page access to the admin. If you have this small application that you want to create for a company or for yourself or for any purpose, how can you achieve this? You can achieve this in two ways. One, you can use role-based authorization. Two, you can use policy-based authorization. Now with role-based, all that you need to do here is to create your three roles. Admin role, manager role, and user role. On the list page, you add only admin and manager because user cannot see this. On detail page, you add user, admin, and manager because three of them can see detail page. In update, admin and manager, user as well because user can also update it. Then in delete, it's only admin and manager. When it comes to the detail page you have it here already so it is set you add all rows update the same you've done it here when you get to contact page you add only admin and user and uh, about us the same admin and user so you can see that when using row base you have to add on top of the page you have to add the rows to each Later on, if you want to add any other any other row, unless you go to the other pages and I'll update them. That's the reason why we are want to use the policy base. Then the policy base, how can we achieve this using the policy base? We have to check. Let's set all the pages which are common to all um, rows let's set them and i'll create one policy for it so when you check here detail page cuts across manager section and also user 
and update page so these two pages we have to create an a policy for them so admin manager user policy three of them they can have access to detail they can have access to update so these two pages all of this can have access to you create one policy for second policy manager can access list page delete page admin can also do same so you create one policy admin manager policy to handle the list page and then delete page bear in mind that whatever the manager can see admin can also see it so you have two policies now and the last policy you're going to create one for contact page about us manager cannot see so it is admin and user you create contact page and about page that's about us page and here admin and user can also see so at the end of this manager can see what has been listed user can also see what has been listed and overall admin can see everything so we're going to create three policies in this to handle this small diagram here in application form all right so before i jump right to visual studio to create a project make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit on that bell to receive updates as soon as i do upload new video i offer mentoring to people who are interested in dotnet blazor WebAssembly server dotnet 8 um mario blazor hybrid web api service and etc so if you're interested check the video description and i have an email in there you can write to me through it all right so let's get going now launch of your studio and here we're going to create a project in here now the name of this project i'm going to give you is demo blazer interactive wasm um, policy authorization so this uh, is interactive using WebAssembly, and this is policy authorization but you know, before we can achieve this policy authorization, there must be authentication. So we're going to work on cookie authentication. Now, if you want to grab a whole video on implementing cookie authentication, I'm not going to explain much in here, but check the video description. I'm going to leave a link in there and which will guide you through how to implement cookie authentication, custom cookie authentication in uh, web app, or that's a Blazor interactive web assembly render mode. Okay. So let's click on next and here we're going to choose WebAssembly and that is it. Click on create to get this project created. If you want to grab the source code too, check this video description and uh, it will be available. So let's build this project and see if everything is working as expected. So build solution. After that, we're going to install packages that we're going to be using on both the server and on the client. Alright, so project built. Then we, I'm going to right click on the server, then unload project. And now in here, I'm going to add the following packages. And that is the EF Core, SQL Server, and our tools. So we need identity framework. We need um, EF Core itself, SQL Server and now tools. Let's save this. I click on this, then update or reload project with dependencies. Let's get these packages installed. So aside from that, we also going to install another package to the client. So we'll click on the client and now let's go to unload project. And now in here, let's add component.authorization. Save this and reload this project with dependencies as well. So at the end, all these packages are going to be installed. Let's build projects again. And let's make sure these packages are well installed. Now this is done let's close this solution explorer now we're going to work on the server we have to create our db contest so let's create the folder known as data in that we can create a class and name it as app db contest well you can create you can give it a name you want 
Now within the AppDB contest class, we are going to create a constructor. And you're going to have from DB options. So you create a constructor, you pass in DB contest option. We specify the uh, class name in here. Also, we're going to inherit from this identity DB contest. And now here we need identity user. So here we are not creating a custom um, identity user. We want to use a default one. So this is going to give us all the databases from the identity um, manager. Okay, so you can save this or you can click on this to use the constructor version if you want to do that. And this feature is coming in from C sharp version 12. Okay, but let's maintain this. Once you are done, we can go ahead, go to our appsetting.json and then create our connection string. So solution, appsetting, and on top here, we create our connection string. And the server here is policy, let me make this, Wasm policy DB. Trusted connection to true trust server certificate. Now that we are done, we need to register this in the program. CS file. So let's go to solution. Then from the program section, we can now register a connection string. And we grab the name default from the absentence class that we created. We grab the connection. Okay. When we are done, let's register a cookie session or cookie service. So, in order to do that, we need to specify the service down here. So, we have service.add authentication, we specify cookie scheme, we add identity cookies, and also we add the identity call specified in the, the class, that's identity user. And also, we have to specify the framework store by implementing or adding the AppDB contest class that we created. We are going to sign in, so we need to sign in. And since we need to provide tokens, we also add the default token provider. Okay, so we set this. Now, once you're done, let's go in there, build solution, and perform migration. Okay, so we go to package manager console. You go to tools, you get package manager, console is here you can get it from here let's add migration so this is going to build it that's going to create a file for us after that you're going to update database okay it was spelled wrongly. Alright, so this is done. Now you have a database table created. So let's go in there and create our login and register component. First of all, we need to create class to handle the properties that we need in registration. So let's solution, then let's add a class, a folder to this, and I'll name it as model. Now with this model, we're going to create login model. So login model. And now the login model, we need just what? It's not email and password. Yes, maybe if you want to customize this, well, you can use any of your choice. Now, aside from that, we need register. So let's also create a register model. And now this register model, admin is going to create an account for manager. It's going to create an account for user so they can log in. In a system or in a company application, no one has access to create an account. It is the administrator has to create an account for you. Then you can now log in and update your password and your info. Isn't it? Yeah, so it is the same thing. 
So when admin is creating an account, he must select row. He must add row. And this time around, you're going to have three rows. You're going to have the manager, the admin itself, and the user. Three rows in a small company. Isn't that nice? <laughs> yes. Okay, so we have this. Let's save all. So let's go in there to our components pages. And now in our pages, we're going to create our the first component. And it's going to be login page. So we have a login page. So in our login page, I have a UI design in here. I'll make this source code available as well. So if you want to grab it, or if you want to create your own customized one, this is also available. Check it out. So we are injecting the user manager. We inject the assigning manager and the navigation manager. You know this already, isn't it? Good. Then we have please login. And now we have a simple edit form, which has this since we are not using um, render mode in here. We this is going to be render in a static way. So we have to implement the method as post and hands form so we can um catch this method as soon as we click on submit and we have just um, email and password you see that when you come down here you will see we have this login and it's coming from this login model we need to implement so this is the name of this project is demo so let me grab the name here and from this login page dot models that's right so we're gonna have our model here let me close this and open it again and i want to come here so before we log in we're going to find the email first if it is not you want to return but in case it is we're going to check the password and in case it's a seat then what we're going to do here is going to password sign in we pass in the application user and this time around, it is identity user of what this um, result from this user manager. Then you pass in the password and um, it's locked out and um, it's remembered. We set all of them to force. If it succeeds, we're going to navigate to the home page. We force load the application. Very simple for this login component. Now let's go to the register component as well. So we're going to create a component and I'll name it as register. So from the same pages, we want to add a new razor component and name is at register page. Well, you can give it any name of your choice. Okay. <laughs> so you can decide to use register page. Okay. So in register page, you also want to have a simple registration form. So I'm going to copy this and paste as well. Now when you check this. We have the simple form for that and you know we have the same method which is posting to register model. We have a register model also. This is a model and this is a method that's gonna hit as soon as you click on submit. In that you have email, we have row, we have um, password and confirm password and button known as submit button. You know when it comes to this side, you know here we create an instance of the sign up and that's a register model. And there's a class I just changed it recently because I was having some issues with it. So change from register to sign up and it's working. <laughs> okay, so with this we create a new identity user. And in that you want to fill up all these three properties. Username, email and password. Aside from that you want to find it and see if user is already registered. If not, we're going to create a user. After creating user, we populate a list of four claims for that specific user. In that we have three claims. We need the email. We need the same email for name and an email purpose. And also we need a row. Remember that when creating an account, you need to add row. So we add the row either. It might be um, administrator, manager, or user. So we specify that from the edit form. And it's good to get fixed in here. After that, we look through the claims and I'll add them to the table. We navigate to login for the user to login. <laughs> that is it. Okay, now once you're done with these forms, what um, can we do again? Let's go to solution and in our routes, uh, dot razor, we're going to update our route. 
to include the authorized route view and maybe authorizing you want to display something small to the user so with this let's go in there and I create our policies so in here from the program.cs file we can add our policy down here so in our policy builder.services.add authorization builder and add the first policy this policy um, is for all admin manager user policy and here a person must get authenticated is you must have a role of admin manager or user so from that we add admin manager this means that the component that are going to apply this policy is limited to admin and a manager only and that's what we have in here we want to add admin user and it is limited to admin and our user so three policies and very simple one okay so let's save this so you know when dealing with authentication in blazor interactive uh, web assembly we have to create the server side and the server side is responsible for populating or gathering the user authentication state and now set it to the client using the component state then the components in the client it has also implement from audit provider it receives the component state the the, the claims on the component state and also utilize it in the, the application okay so we need to create one state for the server and another state for the client so it is setter and our getter okay so let's do that so in here let's create a class and name it as server or state provider and I'm going to create it so add a class and this is server a state provider you can give it any name of your choice now within the server or state provider it has to inherit from server authentication state provider okay so once you have in here we are just going to I think I need to grab this If you want to know more i'll just put the video link in there you can just go in there and now have a look but this is what we're doing we create a component state we create a subscription then we have our authentication stacks um created in here in that we have on authentication state change so when it changes this is what you want to do and on persistent async we want to also do this and um disposes we have to unsubscribe to the state change all right now we need an user model or user info class to handle this and now this class we need two properties username email and username now it is the same we assign the value of what email email to each we want to in case you have any extra data that you want to retrieve in the client that is where you pass in in here now this we are sending this state this component state we are sending this to the client so in the client we are going to um, try take as json here we persist so we are saving to this component state and now that means we have to create a class known as user info so let's create generate a class for this or we can grab this one then let's put this in the client because we're going to be using this also in the client so user info and now with this user info class we need only two properties such as the email and the username okay so and here let's include the namespace so we persist we are saving into the component state and we retrieve the claims from the user so here as you can see from this we want to get the principal from the user and we check if the user has indicated that is where we retrieve the email so in case you have any other claims that you want to retrieve you have to specify them here and now persist them as this and you create a component or properties to handle them and now when you get to the client we're going to retrieve them i'll, I'll teach you that or i'll show you that when we get to that side okay so that's very simple that's all that we need to do so let's include this and that is all so yep 
if you want to check this the original implementation when you choose identity or individual account you have the same thing in there and that is a way to handle the component state in the blazer uh, web assembly server section okay so once you have this we can save we need to register this in the program.cs file so in here we need to include server or states so the application state then server or state provider and that is a let's see let's grab the name well so this is server or state provider okay so the name that we have we now go to the program and make sure we include the namespace yes it is set already so you register this after that we have to create an endpoint and that's going to be sign out endpoint and this is going to be a minimal api so we can sign out so let's also add a class to this and this is sign out endpoint now with this sign out endpoint we need to return i endpoint convention builder and this class this must be static class as well so we need to make it as internal static class okay so map sign out endpoint okay and now here we want to resign out from this then we navigate to account.login so with this we have to also register we go to the same program and now down here app dot map sign out endpoint so let's not forget when you go to the route we see that we added only authorized route view in .NET 7 and below you're supposed to add cascading or state now this has been turned into a service so we need to add that service so maybe where we have this you can put the service on top here add cascading or states so aside from this let's go to the client and now in the client we need to also retrieve this or states from this server or state so we need to create a class to handle that so right click on the client let's add a class to this and i'm going to name it as client or state provider and now in here So I'm going to change this to client or state provider. We need to create um, constructor in here. So we are also going to retrieve the the component state. You know when this is called, when this class is called. You no, know, we have a constructor here, so this is going to get called. And in that, in the server, we use this persist component state. So here we pass onto this, and I want to try take. So we take it from here in the form of user model. We want to retrieve the claims that we have. We have only two claims, email and our name. And in that, we return this tax when we, when we have the claims. So this is just client. We have to replace it. And that is all that we are doing here. And it has this, our state has a default uh, method. That is a get our state, okay? So we need to return this or state. Since this is going to return an, a new instance of an or state with the claim that we have retrieved from the server. We are good to go. Okay. So let's save this. And we have to also register this in the program.cs file. So let's register this and add this. So in the client. And this is 
I have to go in there and now just grab the name client or state. We go to the program and quickly change it up. We add authorization core cascading or state again and also um, less asynchronous of this or state and the instance of the free one that we created client or state. So aside from this, uh, we are going there to create our pages. So we need to create a CRUD component. So in that, I'm going to use the new SCAT folder version of this. So let's see from here, all that I need to do here is to create my class. Now I have the DB contest class created already. So I just have to create a class. Let's go to models and add a new model. And now this is going to be an employee. Now the employee, we have these properties to be taken from employee. Once you're done in here, right click on the server, go to add new SCAT folded item. And now in that, we're going to choose Razor Component CRUD. And um, we wait for the. We choose, we want the CRUD, we choose our model, and it's going to be an employee. You see it over here, DB Contest, you have it in there already. And for the database provider, we need not to select because default is. Um, SQL Server, click on Add, and I'm just going to install some packages in here, and I'm going to scaffold it and then create these four components for CRUD for us. Very simple one. That's great. So you can see it is done. We have our employees list, and this is a create. When you go to the solution, you can see that from here we have a component folder already, pages, and we have a new folder called employee pages. So in that we have all the CRUD in here. Okay, so now with this card, this is going to use um, query. We want you, you want to use parameter. You don't use you use query. So we can we want to edit this a little bit. So I took time to go through this and I made some more changes in here. Okay, so I'll make this available as well. If you want to grab my, or if you want to stick to this too, it's also available. You can also do it. <laughs> okay. So when you go to the index. So instead of referring to this as a um, query string, you want to use parameter instead. So replace it with this as a parameter. Also, let's go to the edit. So solution, then go to the edit. Now the edit, instead of using parameter from query, we're going to change this to um, parameter itself so parameter we're going to use parameter in here so we can post it anytime that I specify this you want to get to this form you must specify this parameter and uh, after doing this we have to change the route and include the parameter in there so the route we have to specify the email parameter that we specified in here. Okay. Now, when you go to details, we have to also do same. So, first of all, we need to also change the route and add parameter to this. Let me save this before. Then, details from here. Let's specify the parameter in there. And aside from that, we go to the source code or the code behind and also change this from query string or from your yeah, query string to parameter in here. So now that we are done with this, you know, we have to create other two pages that is an about us and also um, contact page. Okay, so in that, I just created some pages. You can just create an empty page and I'll link it. Okay, so here I just made some pages and I have them as about us page. It has its CSS class and I have this contact page as well. So maybe for this about us, I'm not sure we need this class for now. So let's move it. It is just a page to display just about us. And now here we are attributing or we are using this authorized the policy of admin and user policy. It just says that only admin user can see this one. And contact us, the same thing. 
it is admin and user policy okay so i have a simple about us or contact us form that you can um fill okay in that i think um let's go to the nav manager and now in the nav manager we need to make all the the links so there's a link that i'm doing in here we have a home and then we get into the home you know this then there's a list and i'm getting to employees and now there's the my details it is navigating to what well, the specific detail component and i'll pass in the email since we're going to be a parameter we need to specify this parameter in here so we create this and now we specify the link in here you could have added it in here but hey well that's my choice you can also decide to put it in here okay then we have about us navigating to about us and contact us the same thing now when you have a look we are saying this authorized view policy is admin user so if you are admin or user you can see this if you are manager you cannot see this this is limited to only the user because my details about us contact us for admin and user only when you go to logout it is for anyone who is authorized you can see this if you are not then register and log in for everybody okay and now in here how can we so blazer web assembly policy now how can we retrieve the current state or current id or the current email of the user when the user logs in we have the email there created and use it in the authentication state so you want to retrieve the email from it then as soon as i click on my details we want to pass on this email to this detail page and now when it gets to the detail page we are going to fish out the email from the list that we have and now assign it to the list of not the list this instance of this employee and that is going to get displayed in here you see this yes very simple one and that is exactly what we are doing in here okay so now that we have this set let's save and i created a simple um footer for this and maybe let me put this for time here from this pages okay so this is a footer that i'm using very simple one and just emp app it tells you this employee app and we have to reference this so in the app down here we have to use this footer and in our app we don't want to log in you don't want to go to the home page once you've not logged in so in the home page when the page initializes you want to check if you are not logging go to the login page but if you are then that's fine it can be there i need to inject navigation manager So that is it. We want to check if you are not logged in, then go to login page. But if you are if you've logged in, and that is all. So nav manager, nav manager, and that is it. Okay. Now let's go in there and build the whole project. Alright, so to succeed it, and that is all. Now we're going to run this application and see since we have a table created. But when you check this, when you go to solution, we created when you check the migration folder, we've applied migration or we created this using the scat folder version of employee. When you go to the app db contest, we have the class being added in here as employee list, but we are not having that table. So in order to do that, go to connected services. Then you must have a SQL server, this one. Right click on this, go to add migration. And here, give it a name. So create EMP table. And now let's wait so we can select the DB class that we created. That is an AppDB contest class. Yeah, so it is selected already. Click on finish to run this migration after that we're going to update this so let's wait that is done so close 
the same area and update database and you're going to select the db contest class and update it so finish and now it is running updating the database and this is also done so now let's run this app and check it out all right so the app is ready now since we are not logged in you can see now we have we've come to log in now let's go in there and register so first going to say there's an admin at admin.com the role is admin the password is admin at one two three admin at one two three let's create this account today is created let's create another one let's create for manager so manager at manager.com the row is manager password is manager at 123 manager at 123 let's create manager account also created let's create one for the user so user at user.com and the row is user password is user at 123 user at 123 click on create now account has been created now let's go in there to admin let's log admin in now you can see from the admin you can see this administration he can see the list you can also see the users um, views user can see my details about us contact us right and now if if authenticated you can see log out either you are administrator you are manager you are um, user you can see this log out when you go to the list you can see we have a list in here now let's create one employee the email is let's say it is an admin the name is netcode hub the address is then maybe you had a date of birth let's click on create then you see it has been created now when get created you can see we have you can have edit detailed and now delete let's also add another one so let's add this user and this is so this is keep then 2023 added let's add one more and that's going to be the user or manager and this is let's also create this so we have three users created right now if i go to my details since i am admin check it out you can see there's an admin so my details i can see myself in here now if i go to about us this is about us nothing is here if i go to contact us i have a simple form that i can contact i can write something okay then the list i can edit this okay so this is the name edited click on save and now save so go back in here so edit it now let's go in again and i remove this edited save this go to the list edit it so you can see it is right here i can go to details and i can go back to the list or edit it okay so back to the list i'm here and i can also delay this well so for delete we need to use the the email instead of the id okay so maybe we can figure it out then let's log this out let's log in as manager log in as manager and you can see manager cannot see the user's features manager can only see the list in here so click on the list manager can edit can find the details of this so you can see edit manager can edit user details can just go back to the list now let's major can also add a new feature to this 
that's a new employee okay let's go let's log out and now let's log in as user and now check it out because user cannot see the list user can see my details about us and our contact us and I log out so my details could see this the user as user and that's the details in here and I could see back to the list this shouldn't have happened because you want you don't want the user to go back to the list okay so you see back to the list we don't want this to happen so we can handle that as well and when you go to about us you have it in here contact us my detailed home and that is it you see so let's handle this my detail back to the list let's handle that so we can do that from the details and now here back to this list we need to change that so this so maybe we can do we can say if authorized view here and if it is admin or manager that is what we want to see back to the list if it is user it's only edits okay and now let's go back to the edit page as well so from the edit here back to the list we want to check if it is user that is where or if it is admin user back home if it is admin manager back to the list okay and you know from the employee from the delete section let's also figure that one out so this is going to be you want to return an email and now with this email instead of this apply parameter this is going to be just a parameter route parameter and this won't be string this won't be id rather string this won't be id rather email and now with this email you want to check if email is equal to this email in case you find that then remove that okay so after removing that is all we don't want to navigate okay you want to navigate to the list well this can happen and that is it so this also solved now we can just run this up and check it once more okay so let's reload this again so let's log in as user so my details and you can see we have only edits you cannot see the delete or back to the list so you can edit this as a user so frederick edited and um, save this and go back again you can see it's edited then about us everything is working log out now if i log in as manager go to the list i might see frederick edited from the user session you see i'm seeing it in here right i can also go to details then if i want i can delete this so let's see if i click on this delete i still have we did not set that and that's that was happening in this so instead of this id nope this is what that we need to do <laughs> yes okay so let's see if this page gets okay okay so if i click on i want to delete this user click on delete yes so i want to do this if i click on delete i can just go back to the list so delete it got removed and i'm back to the list i can go in there and add the same person again click on create and now it has been added in here all right so that is it we've been able to see how to implement this policy base with identity manager you first have to authenticate the user first by applying quick authentication then you configure your policies you group them and i configure and i'll try to use them in it 
that is it i'll make this hospital available so check this video description if you want to grab same in here thank you for watching and i'm going to catch up again till then take care